Number one is, and we've talked about these before, shallow cabinets, making use of shallow cabinets on walls that otherwise couldn't have full depth cabinets on them. And this is really good for a couple different reasons, really important for a couple reasons. One is that shallow depth pa uh, pantries or base and wall cabinets or just wall cabinets, floor to ceiling, one, they don't take up a whole lot of space, and so you can still have a lot of walkway. But two is that they're so easy to access the things that are inside them. And a couple of examples here and see if we can have a look at these. Um, just ways that you can incorporate this is pantries, wall, and base cabinets uh, so that this is tucked in. It almost looks like it's tucked into a little alcove, or maybe that was a closet at one time. So very easy to incorporate these types of things into a kitchen design. Here, here's a standalone unit uh, with sh uh, drawers on the bottom. See how everything is just easy to access. That's why I love shallow cabinetry. And in a kitchen like this, I mean, this isn't, you know, very small kitchen, but it's very easy to access that. And a full depth unit in a kitchen like this would be way too big. Uh, here we have another wall. Again, you have an island, and maybe the only way to fit that island is to have shallow depth units so that you can have seating and have ample walk walkways around that island so that everything's not cramped in. And uh, there's some base cabinets. So everything's very easy to get, at, easy to store. And that's, I think this is maybe the back of an island. But again, it's just a way to use shallow depth cabinetry uh, in a small kitchen space. Second way that we can do this is by using lighter colors. I mean, that's generally uh, a no-brainer. Uh, usually in a small space, lighter colors make the room look bigger and using reflective surfaces also helps with that as well. But here's a little kitchen here, very small, very narrow kitchen, but nice and bright and it doesn't seem like it's coming in on top of you. So again, a nice use of light colors, bright colors to just make that space a little more you know, seem a little larger. Now this looks like a large kitchen, but it's actually a very small kitchen in an open concept room. Again, light colors just help to to make make it seem like it's even probably bigger than it is. And it's not to say you can't use dark colors, of course, but generally speaking in a small space, lighter colors tend to brighten up the room, make it seem a little more uh, inviting. Uh, this has a few different elements that we'll talk about a little bit later, but um, again, light colors, light colors on the inside of those painted cabinets. Uh, and this, you know, this is a darker color, maybe, maybe not a color I would choose, but something, again, that's just lighter. And here's a very big open space, a very tiny uh, kitchen. And so for that reason, you know, these light colors really work. And actually, I love the white and the natural wood look. I think that's really, really sharp. Um, goes really well. I like, I like this type of kitchen, actually. Number three is using glass doors. So that yellow kitchen that we've seen just a couple seconds ago that had the glass doors on it. But glass doors give this appearance of depth. Um, even if you don't, you probably don't even recognize it in that same sort of way. You don't you don't look at the glass cabinet and say, oh, there's some depth there. But it, it just does give that perception to your eyes, makes the space look a little bigger, look a little deeper. And so adding glass in certain places, it doesn't have to be everywhere, but adding that detail can really help uh, make the space seem a little larger uh, overall. Again, these aren't all tips that, you know, again, these aren't all things that you, we've never heard before. This is a lot of glass doors and even looks like some of the doors are those really clear glass doors. Yeah, there's a reflection in them, but even above the fridge, they have glass. Um, so looks like they have a shower curtain even on the patio door. <laughs> again, this is a, a small-ish kitchen, not, not too small, but bright colors. The glass on those doors really helps to to make that space look uh, even bigger. And again, here's a darker uh, kitchen, but with the glass doors, with the lighting on the inside too. That's another great tip: is to put lighting on the inside of those cabinets. Makes that space seem, you know, even a little bit bigger than it is, and gives it a a particular look that just having a a flat surface door wouldn't necessarily give you. The next one is vertical space. Now, this can be whether you have an eight foot ceiling, nine foot ceiling, 10 foot ceiling, and so on. Of course, the, the higher you go, the less usable some of that space is going to be. And on a 12 foot ceiling, going to the ceiling with cabinets might not be the best solution because they'd be sort of reached except for, without a ladder. But using vertical space to a certain degree is very beneficial, especially if you do have a small kitchen with a regular eight foot ceiling. Um, 
and this is just pantry to the ceiling. Uh, normally, like back in the day when I was designing kitchens early, early on, one kind of a, the standard was to install kitchens at seven feet and you'd have this one foot of just space, maybe crown molding or a gallery galley rail uh, on top or just nothing on top. And you know, people would plants and whatnot on top of there. And, and that, that trend sort of died down and cabinets started going to the ceiling at, at some point, this became more and more of a thing that we would do more often. Um, this looks like something out of Ikea because of that thing the bike is sitting on is uh, an Ikea product for sure. But this is just vertical uh, height. This is a little higher ceiling. These are probably, I'm going to say, you know, nine foot ceiling, maybe a 10 foot ceiling. Uh, yeah, probably a 10 foot ceiling. And just, you know, right to the ceiling. Of course, that those cabinets up above, they have the glass in them as well. It's a nice bright color. This isn't an overly massive kitchen. It's a little L shape. But uh, using that vertical space is really, really wise. And uh, again, it's, you know, I even talk about things that are over your head aren't the best use of space. But in a small kitchen, you have to take all of that into consideration and use it how you think it's going to be best suited for you. Did that have, looks like it has a, a some kind of rail there. I don't know if that's just a detail. You can hook a ladder to that. I, I think you can probably hook a ladder to that uh, little rail. Uh, this is just to highlight the fact that in vertical space, you can use a pull down wall unit, which I talk about quite a bit. This has the glass shelves in, in this unit as well with the, with the glass doors. And um, those are another way to just make the space feel a little bit bigger. But uh, using some kind of pull down unit as you're utilizing that vertical space is really wise. If uh, if that kind of thing fits your budget, of course, because they are not cheap, but we're talking about, you know, kitchen, put your budget, try to get one of those in your kitchen for sure. And here's another great way to do it, but you gotta be careful with this one. This is uh, over the, well, this is in a pantry. Looks like there's a microwave or something beneath that. Uh, vertical storage for trays and pans. You just have to be careful with this, that you can actually get your arm in there in the event that there's something that's uh, shallow or that goes into the back. So another interesting way, there's different interesting ways that you can use these kind of uh, vertical spaces to you know, store things that otherwise would be stored down low, gets them out of the way, easy to access as long as, like I said, you can get your hand in, into something like that and not get stuck or lose something in back. Um, of course, maybe those can be adjustable. You can pull out those dividers, which would be another great way to do it. Next one is this, use many pullouts, many, many, many pullouts. I love using pullouts. I think they should be in every cabinet possible unless the cabinet is a specific use or it's just a drawer bank, which essentially is just a pullout. So as many pullouts as you think you can get in your kitchen, you should use them. Here's some for pots and pans and for spices, of course, just different ways to, to make the space more usable. And I find that when you have pullouts, especially I mean, even something like this, it still frees up the floor of that cabinet and other space that maybe could be used for other things. You could put trays on the bottom of that potentially. Just ways to maximize how the cabinets are used. Uh, here's another great way with toe kick drawers. Again, I'm not a huge, huge fan of toe kick drawers, but uh, you know, they're a great way to utilize space that basically is just never used. So you know, go for it if you want to do that. I just, I don't know. There's something about them. I'm, I just, I don't know what it is. There's no, I don't have any real reason. I just, it's not a huge fan. Uh, but this has, you know, things on the door, racks on the door, uh, and then pullouts as well in that cabinet. So just ways to make the cabinet more usable and utilize as much space as possible. This is interesting. Um, this is a, a real, a real space saver and a real pullout here is, this is something you just pull out and sit on. Um, not, not for everyone, obviously, but in a small unit, maybe a smaller condo or, or something like that, this kind of thing would be very beneficial. Now, of course, you have to consider the fact that this little table and chair set is taking up space uh, of storage. So something you kind of have to weigh out. But if there's no possible way that you can put seating in your kitchen, something like that is a possibility. And, um, you know, it might be even better than uh, the, the space that you're losing. Who knows? And just another set of pullouts. You know, there's always things that you can store them. I love actually pullouts inside of just full height door cabinets because I like the shallow, the shallowness of the pullout. That uh, makes everything easy to see and easy to access, as opposed to a, a drawer bank with three drawers, say that have a high uh, drawer. You know, a deep box. Sometimes, sometimes can be difficult to to get at the things that are in there. 
of course they keep things from spilling out. So it's, you know, you're weighing out all the, the, the pros and cons of those things as you go along. The next one is storage versus counter space. So this is something you have to consider and for every kitchen, this is going to be different, but it's, it's balancing these two things between storage and counter space. And how do we make the most of each and which one is more important if you had to choose, if your kitchen is in that position where you have to make that kind of choice, what kind of uh, ways can you go about utilizing storage and counter space to the best of your abilities? So these are just some small kitchens that uh, this is a very, very tiny space. I'm, I'm sure how you'd use that oven with uh, with that, that small space, you have to stand on the, on the side of it. But again, utilizing ways, they got a plate rack, maybe some open shelves and some different ways of just utilizing this to, to get the most out of these kitchens. Here's a real tiny little L shape again with, uh, with, you know, very little counter space, very little storage. And so it's just to put in your mind to think about in your kitchen renovation, in your kitchen, how are we balancing these things out? Do I have enough space for preparing food, for doing the things I need to do in the kitchen? And do I have enough space for all my stuff? And sometimes these things, you know, sometimes some things have to be sacrificed. This is a, a, a kind of a bleak looking kitchen here, uh, just with very little storage. I don't know what the rest of the space looks like, but I don't, I I don't assume that it's a very large uh, kitchen overall, but you, you have to do what you, you can with the space you have. So adding a little uh, table like this, a little island that you can use as some extra space for a countertop and for storage underneath might be the way that you have to go because you just don't have the room uh, otherwise. And so, you know, all these things you take into consideration. Now, this one here, uh, of course, you can... I like, I like recently Amy started using jars and glass jars for things. And I, I, th I think it's really great. It just cleans up the inside of the pantry a whole lot because there's not bags of stuff everywhere. So I, I really uh, like these. And then, you know, you can determine how much of these things are, are going to be on your countertop. Uh, can they be stored there or do you need that space? And uh, so, you know, if you have to store them on your countertop, you know, having a box of noodles obviously is not going to look as nice as having a jar of noodles and um, that, that can come in pretty handy. So small appliances is the next one. And this isn't certainly for everyone, but if you have a small enough space, having small appliances, and I, I don't mean toasters and, you know, Vitamixes and, and stuff like that. I mean like literally smaller appliances. So, uh, you know, 24 inch ranges or 24 inch you know, column fridges or freezers. This little kitchenette has a small little sink, a smaller uh, gas range. And so, and it looks like there's a, a underneath, there's a, an under counter um, fridge. If this is all the space you have, then you have to go with these things and consider those things. I recently did a, a kitchen for uh, a client and, you know, they wanted the biggest appliances possible in the space that would make sense and sometimes what makes sense is to go with something smaller uh, rather than going with standard size or, or going larger because of the space that you're going to save if, if it means getting an extra drawer bank and you can live with something that's a little smaller for a range then it's something to consider for sure here's a, a smaller dish uh, dishwasher with um, smaller oven smaller cooktop so Again, there's just ways to to minimize the space. Here's a really small kitchen um, with, um, I, I think this might be an Ikea uh, picture from, I could be wrong about that, but everything you need. This is probably nine feet, 10 feet at the very most. And you have a you have everything in there. You, you have a wall, a range top, a sink, dishwasher, a fridge, um, not a ton of cat space. Uh, not a ton of storage, but everything's in there. And the way they did that is by using those smaller appliances. So definitely something to consider if, if need be. Generally not something that most people want to do. We usually we want bigger appliances, um, especially in North America. We want just bigger appliances, bigger fridges, bigger stoves. I mean, 36 inch ranges are becoming more and more popular. Uh, you know, bigger fridges are becoming more and more popular. However, if this is something you need to do, then it's certainly a way to go. Hanging racks is another thing you can utilize in a small kitchen. Not my favorite. I just find hanging racks look cluttered and it's not my favorite thing. But regardless, it's something that can work very well if you don't have enough space, enough uh, cabinetry to store things. This is one way to do it. Um, 
again, not my cup of tea, but you know, I'm drinking coffee today, so it doesn't matter whose cup of tea it is. I think these can look nice when they're curated. I like that knife block that's incorporated into the countertop. Uh, that's very cool if you notice that there. And, um, you know, I think, I think it looks nice. Again, I don't know, maybe that, that looks pretty good, I guess. That doesn't look too bad. Something hanging. Here's another one that's hanging. So I, I guess in the right setting, it can look very beautiful um, to each his own. And so you have to figure these things out for your own space, of course, and how you're going to use it. Uh, here's one here that looks like it's, yeah, it's just screwed into the side of the cabinet. So not something that's super difficult to, to manage. Like these types of things would be very easy for do it yourself or just to go and make some kind of rack even that you can hang things on. I know Ikea and other places like that sell uh, racks that you can have on the, on the, on the wall underneath cabinets and, and uh, just a way to save some space. Corner options. It's very important to think about how you're going to utilize corners if you have them, if you have a small L shape or even a smaller U shape kitchen, how are you going to utilize your corners? It's important to think about those things and go through how, how am I going to, use these corners. It's funny, my buddy just sent me a, a text with a picture a video of his corner cabinet and it doesn't have a, any type of accessibility. It's a blind corner and it's just a, this deep crevice of, of stuff. And he says in the video, like there's stuff in there from 10 years ago. So you, you don't want that. You want to at least be able to access that stuff, whichever way you want to do it. I thought this one was interesting. Uh, Usually I'm not a fan of corner pantries, but this this one here, if you can see it, looks really, really interesting. Um, it's it's a corner pantry, but then a, another pantry kind of built in next to it. So the two doors, uh, you can open up to this bigger space. I, I kind of think I like the way they did this. I thought I thought it was pretty smart. Uh, you know, everything is is right there. Some stuff's kind of up high, but, you know, there's pullouts in it, which is very good. Has like a little wine rack on the bottom and some drawers and uh, so very cool. So someone really took some thought into this and, and how, and even this has a little spice rack uh, on the wall. So just this kitchen was planned out, thought out. And uh, I like, I like the way they did that. You know, the magic chef, everyone's favorite uh, corner accessory for a blind corner, definitely something to consider in your kitchen renovation. If you have a smaller kitchen, this is an interesting one. I hadn't seen this one before, um, but um, again, just another way as, as a you know, single pullout and it looks like there's stuff in back in there. I'm not sure how you get at that. So maybe that's just, you know, you have to reach in for that stuff. But again, something to consider. You got to consider your corner cabinets. Now, this isn't necessarily a corner. Well, it is a corner cabinet, but it's, it's not necessarily a kitchen cabinetry. This would be maybe something you'd buy on Wayfair or, or something like that. But you have this little nook and it, it's, you know, it, it matches your cabinets. It's white go for it. I mean, some, even that would be something that's a little more storage and in a small kitchen storage is the name of the game and finding every little place you can is, uh, is definitely worth uh, investigating. So very cool. And, and the lastly is this clean house. Um, <laughs> not saying your house is dirty, probably maybe your house is cluttered or you have too much stuff that you need to get rid of. Um, and so here's just a beautiful picture of a very neatly, you know, organized drawer and islands and island with drawers and pullouts, of course, obviously curated for this picture, but nonetheless, this is kind of the, the goal that we're going for. Now, here you have stuff on top of the counter, you have some open shelves, um, you got some glass <laughs> doors. You got some hanging things there. Uh, you got some bright colors. It's kind of a mix of everything uh, in this maybe small kitchen. You have to answer, do I want things on my countertop or not? Some people just don't want things on their countertop. One of the complaints I get a lot from people are, I just my countertops are so cluttered and I, I want to I clean that up. And so this might not be something that you would want. It doesn't look horrible because it's kind of staged, of course. But in a real life setting, do you want things on your countertop or not? And that's a, it's really something to consider, especially in a kitchen renovation. How much of my countertop is going to be, you know, kind of allocated for things that I want to put on there? You know, you might have certain smaller appliances like uh, your coffee maker and whatnot that need to be on there. And so you have to think about that. And then how much of all this other stuff do you want hanging around? Here's some just more storage so that everything's neat and tidy. Again, little plate racks. 
things to store your, your flatwares in bins, anything like that to just declutter the space. I think that you can just do a lot just by cleaning out your cabinets. And sometimes people are just surprised that, okay, so such simple advice, but it makes a huge difference when you just kind of clean everything out and it's like, oh, I can breathe again. Here's a kitchen that I would consider cluttered. However, everybody's different and the way that you like to have your kitchen might be different than the way I like to have my kitchen. And so if this is the type of thing you go for, then by all means, this has a very small uh, range, of course, a little larger fridge, but this is a very small little kitchen, bright colors, kind of mix matched. It's kind of eclectic, but this is, a, this might be somebody's style. I'm not sure, you know, there's not a lot of prep room. You got the, all the little things on, on the countertop, but to each his own. And that's really important. It's important that you design the kitchen for you, not for somebody else. And it's important that your designer knows that this is fine. I don't mind having all this stuff on there. This is what I like and what I want. And there's no right and wrong when it comes to kitchen design necessarily. I mean, some things probably I'd prefer to be different, but that's because I'm a human and I have an opinion. So um, if this is something that you absolutely enjoy for a kitchen, then it's perfect. Um, just as long as you can access everything and you're happy, then that's all that really matters. So those are the 10 tips that I have for you. I hope that all makes sense and it's a little bit valuable. Kitchens are, whether they're big, small, medium size, we want to get the most out of them. And hopefully some of these tips will help you do just that.